changing lives. Hi, good evening and welcome to the program Wounds of the Heart, where we are here to heal those wounds that have been caused by any emotional trauma, psychological, physical thing that you still struggling and battling with. This afternoon, this evening, I'm delighted and elated to have someone special on my, on my studio. And today we're going to talk practically and personally about things and how best somebody can overcome or can grieve that will bring healing. If you want to join this conversation, if you want to send in your comment and everything, you can do that on our WhatsApp platform 0559-680066, 0559-680066, or on our Facebook um, page, Hope TVGH on Facebook and YouTube. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. You can also join us on there and we can also have the program together. If your friend or your loved one um, watches this program and he or she is not around, please kindly tell the person that the program has started. And the program is Wounds of the Heart. Um, Slicker Freak all the time um, gives me a fabric and you can see the fabric, it, it looks sleek on me. Um, Slicker Freak, God bless you. They deal with fabrics in case you want Slicker Freak. The contact is 0551-0557-355-852. You just go on their social media, um, Slicker Freak Facebook and Instagram. Just select any fabric and the dispatch rider will bring it's right on your desktop. And I also have this gentleman who always designed my flyer, Alpha Art. Alpha, God bless you for all the time putting me out there on your flyer. In case you want Alpha Art, the contact is 0551-404-387. 0551-404-387. Just call him, talk to him. He, any type of design, flyer, logo, whatever, he's there to do it for you. And in case you want to sponsor this program, Wounds of the Heart, you can send your contact personally to our WhatsApp platform, 0559-680066. We will have a, a chat with you so that we can carry this program to another level. We want to hit on campuses, and we need that support. So at the right time, we'll launch that uh, campus train, and we'll see how best we can get this program to our SHSs and the other campuses that we have. Um, if you are a church or any organization and you want to also invite us, um, we are ready to, to seek for that invitation to come to your, to your church or any institution so that we can also help them out there and we can have that, this program with your church. Today, as I said, I'm happy to have um, the former second lady of the Republic of Ghana and she is an author um, she has written books and that books, if in case you, you, you hump or you, you pounce on that books, please read them. It is a grieving healing book on its own. Whoever is grieving, whether somebody died or whatever, read that book and I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. Um, she also runs an NGO that is called Breaking the Myth. I asked her, they said, and we, we, they are trying to let us understand the fact that if, if you are even um, at a dis um, yeah, disability or whatever, you can still make it in life. And probably at a better time, I'll let mom talk about, about, about it. And she is also um, a unique ministry for the widows and vulnerable whom um, she devotes her time to talk to them. This afternoon, she has written 13 children's books and three adult books. Um, so she's, she's not a kara. Do you get it? Today, I'm happy to, to, to talk to our mom, Mami Matilda Emisa Atha, the former second lady of the Republic of Ghana. Mom, good evening. Good evening. Um, please, how are you doing? I'm well and um, blessed. We, we thank God for that. Um, so viewers, as you, as you can see, I'm, I'm with mom, and we want to talk about some incidents that happened some years ago, and she's here to tell us. Probably you had, you had your own... The bloggers probably might write certain things about it, but mom is here to tell us about what actually happened, how did she feel, and what was the most painful aspect in that aspect, so that he, she can also help us how she was able to cope with the grieving process. Ma, um, I was reading um, this, um, The Strength in the Storm, When a Loved One Dies. 
there's the, the chapter one, my husband is dead. I don't know, ma'am, what happened that fateful morning? What happened? Um, thank you so much for having me on your program. The first chapter is titled, My Husband Died. Died. Actually, that was the title I chose for the book, My Husband Died. But my publishers thought that it was too much in the face. Mm. And therefore, we settled on Strength in the Storm. Okay, okay. My husband died on the 29th of June. June. We went to the gym as always. We go to the gym Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mm. We get there at 4.30 and we leave around 6. So we went to the gym. We'd almost finished uh, exercises when he collapsed. So he you, were was, part, you were part of? Your, yes, I was there. Okay. He was resuscitated. And then we went to 37, and then shortly after he died. I asked for a postmortem. A postmortem was done, and it was inconclusive. So my husband died, plain and simple. Ah. In, in um, local parlance, we we'll say he died a sudden death. He died a sudden a death. A sudden death. Mom, uh, you see, the news that was out there, um, being a public figure and going to the gym. I, I had not been today. I never knew that mom was with dad at the gym. We realized that he, he went for gym and um, whatever, cardiac arrest, blah, 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 and he passed on. Mom, going to gym together with your husband and returning as alone. Mom, how was the feeling like? I'll tell you something. Um, after he had been pronounced dead, my son is a doctor, the wife is a doctor. Mm -hmm. So they both were there, he was pronounced dead. I, I didn't drive, a driver took me home. Mm -hmm. Now I'm smiling, but then it wasn't a smiling instance, but mm -hmm. we, at that time we lived in North Ridge. Mm -hmm. We lived on Tafawa Balewa Road, which is, the street before the World Bank Road. Mm -hmm. It's directly opposite GBC. Okay, okay. And as we turned to go onto that street, I saw all these cars pass there. And listen carefully, I asked my driver, what is happening in the area with all those cars <laughs> pass there, pass there? I I did not mean and my driver cringed because he knew that they were parked there, they were in my house. Mm -hmm. This is to tell you of the emotions mm -hmm. and the things that happen to you when something like that happens that I hadn't even thought of the fact that the cars were parked, they were in my house. Mm -hmm. So we drive and as we get closer to the house, then it dawned on me that they were in my house. And then I see, if I'm not lying, hundreds of people in front of my house. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I was so confused I was so sad that, to be honest to you, I didn't even see the faces well. And as we say, I couldn't even put a name to a face. Okay. I just saw figures okay. there. Okay. So it's a mixture of sadness, shock, pain, whatever, all mixed together. Now he's, he's dead. Leaving the hospital being informed that he's dead, coming to your house, seeing people, but yet you were asking, what, what are these people doing in this area? You've forgotten that even it was in, 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 they were parked in front of your own house. Mom, as a public figure, uh, news, radio stations here and there, that particular moment, what happened? How, 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 how did you manage those things? As I say in my book, as a public figure, of course, news goes around before you can even tell somebody. So the whole world knew that my husband had died even before I got home. Mm -hmm. The whole world knew, before, but there's nothing you can do. Exactly. That is part of what the world has come to be now. You really cannot do anything about it. And at that time, that is even not something you think about. You are so engrossed in your loss. Mm -hmm 
that you don't even care about the fact that it's gone on air or hasn't gone, mm -hmm. what okay. somebody has written or hasn't written. In fact, that doesn't concern you. Mm -hmm. What concerns you is the death you are facing and the pain that is coming out at that time. Well, we, we, we hear people, husband die, people, wife die. We talk, there, there are a lot of um, myth surrounding the death of a loved one, especially who is a public figure. And you, you, you hear on radio or TV, oh, that it's a party, whatever, and position and whatever. How, Ma, I, I, I want you to tell us. Some of us uh, probably might not know what happens around it, but um, you hearing that, you, 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 you people telling you how that particular moment when when you hear a party member has done this or um, because of position, because uh, they are sacrificing. We heard all these things on radio. And somebody you have lived with, somebody you know, seeing your husband sometimes giving sermons, because I've witnessed a sermon at Bible Society 50th anniversary before. Ma, spiritually, as a Christian, and with what you're hearing, practically, Ma, what was the, what, what was the connotation? In our part of the world, mm -hmm not just a public figure. Nobody dies their own death. Mm -hmm. Reasons are ascribed, but more so for a public figure like my husband. Of course, there were lots of conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. Some people said he'd been sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Others said he'd been killed. Names were mentioned to me about mm. who killed him and so on. Mm. Of course, it aggravates your pain. Mm -hmm. It worsens your pain, it angers you, it, it, it boils your temper and everything. But as I say in the, my book, the good thing for us who believe in the Lord mm -hmm. is that we know that God is capable and able mm -hmm. to prevent anything from happening to those who know him and are his children. Mm -hmm. And therefore, for me, at that time, and up till now, what I say is that, and I believe and I know is that, if God did not want him to die, God would have prevented it. Whoa. And therefore, for me, the fact that he died, whether somebody killed him, whether somebody didn't kill him, whether whatever happened, once God allowed it, praise him, hmm. it is his time. So at that time, people were telling me, this, is my, this was my take. And up till now, this is my take. Yeah. Well, um, um, in case you just joined us, um, Mami Bisata is here with us on the studios, um, sharing um, the experiences she went through when um, the husband died some time ago, in Ju June 29th, some time ago. And the whole country and the part of the world um, had that effect because he was the, um, the former vice president of the republic. Now, the, the news had been said. Everyone, everywhere knows that he's dead. Because he's a public figure, man. What, we know that when, when um, in a family, when somebody dies, the Boussian start to do, um, um, the come and sit down, tell us when we're going to celebrate the one week, and after the one week, how the funeral go like. Well, but man, how was, how was Pakusi's own? How was that's own? Whether the person is a public figure or not, traditions and customs are things that we adhere to. Mm -hmm. So even though TV, radio mm -hmm. had broadcasted it that my husband had died, mm -hmm. culturally we did the right thing mm -hmm. by sending family members, mm -hmm. first my family members, mm -hmm. to go to his family mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. tell them of the death. Mm -hmm. So my two sisters and an aunt and my brother went to Cape Coast mm -hmm. to tell the family of the death. Mm -hmm. Mind you, his brother, he has an only brother, had been called so was with us at the hospital mm -hmm. and saw that he had died. Mm -hmm. But customarily, you have to go and tell. So <laughs> even though the brother was with us, mm -hmm. he actually signed everything. Mm -hmm. People went on my side to Cape mm -hmm. Coast to tell them of the death. Mm -hmm. And then people also went to the castle, to the Jubilee House mm -hmm. to inform the president mm -hmm. and any other people that mm -hmm. we thought. Mm -hmm. So those things were done even in spite of the fact that mm -hmm. 
he was the vice president, former vice president. Mm -hmm. News had come already. Mm -hmm. We did those things. Mm -hmm. so, and which means that um, the, the process took off very well. Um, cultural, what we need to do with them. And now we do, um, you, you, all of a sudden you have become a widow and, and you are living that single life. Stepping into the house, seeing his pictures, um, the things you guys used to do together, um, and all those stuff. Mom, you are smiling. <laughs> Mom, um, please tell me, Ma, and my viewers, did it, did it, did it come so easy? When, what time? After now, now. You mean now or then? From now to now, yeah, from <laughs> then to now, Ma. Because it's, it's not easy. Today, your, your DP is the two of you. Mm -hmm. On your WhatsApp DP, mm -hmm. it's the two of you. Mm -hmm. So, Ma, how, how, how do you relieve those experiences? And how do you cope with them? Because now he's gone. Now we, we haven't gotten yet to the funeral. Mm -hmm. We won't, we'll get there. Um, the process, the, pro the process have been done. All these things have been done, Ma. Seeing these things, do you still at a point in time realize that it is true that he's dead? Like, as pe people will say, oh, Mikno Muye, Mijidi Soweba. And still, and people will frank him or her and say that your husband is dead. It's no, he, she's not, he's not dead. At, were you, did you en 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 engage in that, that level of grieving? Oh, yes. Um, in, the, in the few weeks following his death, I actually would go up the stairs and in my head be hoping to see him when I got upstairs. And then I'll check myself and say he's dead. There are times that while he was alive, one of the things that we did was to test each other very frequently. Okay. For example, if I'm traveling to, let's assume I'm going to Takrade. From the time I set off in the morning, I'll be testing him. I'm in Kaswa. We just got here. We are here. We now be tested. I get there and so on. So after he died, I find myself sometimes taking my phone and starting to test him. And then I realize he's not there. So yes, from the day he died till now, there are times that I, not that I wish, but, and not that I forget, I know he's dead, but for some reason, I want to see him. So, so it lingers, the difference is that now, it is not as intense as it used to be when he died. June will be three years when my husband died. Yeah. So now the intensity is not the same. But at the early stages, I really thought that it was a dream. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. I would wake up mm -hmm. and find out that somebody made a mistake. Mm. Yeah, the early stages. Yeah. Mm. So the trauma that he went through was enough. No matter, everyone knows that he's gone. Mm -hmm. Now the, the things have been done, the culturally, whatever we need to do, we do the, the date has been set for his funeral. There are traditional beliefs there, widowhood right. Mom, I read through, I read the book and I, I realized that I didn't know whether all these things happened to you or you were, you, you, you were educating the, the public about certain things that are done. Mom, did you experience any of these? As I said in the book, I didn't go through any widowhood rights. Okay. I said that in the book that I didn't go to any widowhood rights. But it's a chapter in the book because I didn't go through anything, but I know that others go through. Exactly. So what I say in the book is that the death is traumatic. Mm -hmm. The pain and everything that comes with it is difficult to deal with. So widows and widowers should be spared that added pain. Because uh, you see there are as a fan, every every tribe has its own way. Mm -hmm. have, 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 have you have somebody uh, told you about a right that she went through that you, you thought that um, it is too much of a burden that those things should be stopped? Or as aside we hearing and um, what it is out there, practically has somebody um, um, opened up to you because of the work you do now mm -hmm. about a, a right that she went through that you think that if the chance is given, those things should be stopped. Yeah, for example, in the book, I talk about being called to go and help a widow who was being accused of killing the husband. Mm -hmm. And that widow being made to go through certain things. 
One of them is being made to sit on a stone, mm. on a stone. Instead of sitting on a chair, she was supposed to sit on a stone till the burial. Mm -hmm. And I make a point there that we must be careful. It's an outmoded right, if you, if you like. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the olden days, there were no seats. Mm -hmm. So people sat on stones. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe, but now things have changed. Mm -hmm. I make a point in the book that several of these things are taken from time of old. Yes, yes. Sir. And because they are archaic now, if we are not careful, would be trampling on people's human rights. For example, we say that widows should bath some concoctions. In the olden days, it was to, if you like, ward off evil spirits, they say. Mm -hmm. Now we know that the concoction doesn't ward off evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Now we know that. Mm -hmm. So why do you do that? Okay. There's a simple one as the widow or widower should have their bath by 6 p.m. From interviewing people, I got to know that it was because in the olden days, people lived in compound houses and didn't have bathrooms in their houses. Mm -hmm. And you had to step outside mm. to go and have your bath. So at night, and there were no lights on the compound, okay. you could fall. Mm -hmm. So have your bath early. Mm -hmm. That was the thing. Now, most people have ensuite bathrooms in their houses. <laughs> there are lights. So that right, for example, does not hold. But unfortunately, most of the time, we are not told why certain things are done. Mm -hmm. And they are forced on the widow or the widower. Mm -hmm. And those things are what aggravate the situation. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they are even infringes mm -hmm. on the human rights of the people. Mm -hmm. So my, the point I make in the book is that we, sh we need to review some of these things mm -hmm. and do away with those that are injurious your health for example drinking concoctions mm -hmm. in some cases the water that is used to bath the cups is given to the widow to, to bath uh -huh. or to uh -huh. drink uh -huh. yeah. that is poison <laughs> if you are drinking yeah, because you don't know what's in the water exactly. and so things like that we should be able to take away yeah. now now that covered COVID is seen and, mm -hmm. and probably the husband or the wife died out, out mm -hmm. of COVID and you tell the the, the widow or the widower to to drink it's yeah. true um is it that there are a lot of things we came to meet that we need to mm -hmm. understand get to the root of why th those things are happening so that we can also help other people to be able to not do the same thing but then do certain things that will help the widow or the widower mm -hmm. grieve better um another question that i want to i want to pose um mom psychologically psychologically how were you able to um uh, manage the shock now you're telling me as 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 now, Krano, certain things comes away and you still get, get back yeah. to, to 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 the memories psychologically. Is it because you were a public figure or because of the Christian background? So um, you were able to. How did you manage the psychological shock? I have said it on many platforms, and I still maintain that it is by the sheer grace of God. Mm. And I really want people to know that your Christian faith is what takes you through times like this. Okay. And for me, I know it is my belief in God mm -hmm. that took me through. Okay, so um, uh, the Bible says that we shouldn't uh, mourn like those who don't have hope. Um, mm -hmm. So probably mom, mom took her, 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 her strength from those words, scriptural words, but then, she didn't tell us that she didn't grieve or she grieved. She, at the first time, we realized that she said that when she was even getting closer to, the, to, the, to her own house, seeing car parked, asking the driver, why are this car parked here? And you could understand psychologically she was going through um, traumatic experience at that particular moment. Mom, now um, you, you told us that you, 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 you had people who were saying that they know who um, who killed your husband, blah, blah, blah. At the point in that, did you, did you wish in your life to go for a visa? No. No. Never. Okay. That, that, is, that is a straight no. Yeah, straight no, never. Because I've just told you mm -hmm. that God has all the power mm -hmm. and all the ability mm -hmm. to stop it. Mm -hmm. And he didn't stop it. So it means that that is it. How would you do the serious 
And I, I hope and pray that m m uh, Christians will understand um, 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 what she's saying. It is complex to say goodbye to somebody you have spent so much of years with and all, just all of a sudden going for a gym and returning, uh, you, you return alone and the person didn't come with you, your, your better half didn't come. Unlike somebody who had been sick for, for years or for months and you know that, okay, this sickness probably might lead to death. But we, it is somebody who had the strength from the house, went for jogging to, 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 to keep fit. Man, did, did it scare you from keeping fit? Also, for, uh, before I answer that, let okay. me tell you something. Okay, ma. Whether you are an audacious Christian, <laughs> whether you are an Osofo, an archbishop, or whatever, mm -hmm. death hits you with the same blow it hits everybody. Okay. So psychologically, you feel the death, okay. you feel the impact. Okay. But questions about who killed who and what mm -hmm. and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. If they would bring back the person, mm -hmm. I would go for it. Okay. You know, if okay. Ebisa, Mm -hmm. would have brought by my husband. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If questioning all those about my mm -hmm. husband, I would have asked those questions. Mm -hmm. But the visa would not bring back my husband. The questions would not bring back my husband. So for me, at that time, all I wanted was my husband alive. Mm -hmm. So anything that would not make my husband alive, as far as I'm concerned, Out. it's all realistic. <laughs> for me, at that time, mm -hmm. I wanted my husband alive. Mm -hmm. If somebody had come and not said I can raise him because somebody came and said I, w I can raise him. Yeah, we heard, we, we, yeah, I can we raise him. Somebody <laughs> came and said that. No, if somebody had actually raised him and he walked into my house, I'll be happy. Okay, but don't come and tell me I can. So raise him. all those things I can raise him. Let's go and ask somebody did this. Mm -hmm. Would not bring him back. Mm -hmm. So why would I go through that channel that would not bring him back? Mm -hmm. It is going to make me more hurting. Is going to aggravate my pain. Mm -hmm. It's going to make me more, if you, if you like, confused. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I didn't need more confusion. I had enough. Mm -hmm. I didn't need more pain. I had enough pain. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I decided that mm -hmm. nothing. That's wonderful, Ma. That, yeah. is, that is wonderful, Ma. In case you just joined us, uh, Mom is sharing her experiences when um, the husband died. And if you, you have questions for her, if you want to send in your comments, you can do so on our WhatsApp platform 0559-680066, or on our Facebook page, um, Hope TV GH, Facebook or um, um, YouTube, and you can leave your comment there. We will read them for you. We are, we are live on, on um, Wounds of the Heart, where we're going to heal the wounds of people's heart, being it emotional, psychological, or whatever. We are here to help people that. Mom, now, the funeral, you see, Sometimes when somebody is, is grieving, some, somebody's person that the church comes in, they sit, they do, they do sit with that person for um, some short period of time and they go. Was yours like that? Or yours because... I don't understand. Church comes in. What see, do you when, mean? when we hear your, your somebody is mm -hmm. dead, the church will come in, um, sit. Sometimes somebody will say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That short moment in, in a bereaved life, was yours like that or because you, because of the background, they were there every blessed time? Of course, my church members, my husband was a member of the Calvary Methodist mm -hmm. Church congregation. Mm -hmm. And I would go to first service with him mm -hmm. before I go to my church. I wasn't a member of Calvary, okay. but I think a lot of people will swear that I'm a member of Calvary because, <laughs> because I used to go to first service before I go okay. to mine. I go to Ashby Dangwall Church and I'll go to mine. Mm -hmm. The Calvary Methodist ministers were there, I mean, throughout. Mm -hmm. From the day he died till he was buried, they were there every day would come. My own church were there every day they would come. So there was a flow of people. And I must say that one thing that really surprised me was that I did speak in certain churches mm -hmm. and all those church people were there. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, one particular church, I never spoke there. I went to this church because um, a reverend minister friend of mine's mother's memorial service was being had okay. there. And that's why I went there. Mm -hmm. When my husband died, the minister of that church came with the elders 
and I couldn't even remember them. Mm -hmm. And he said, Madam, you came with our church when this, this man, mm -hmm. and I was really touched. Mm -hmm. Every church I'd had an association with came. So, so for me, I must say that mm -hmm. it was a real blessing mm -hmm. because all the churches came because I've had an association with him. And they didn't come once, they didn't come twice. They kept coming till my husband was buried. Well, you're privileged. Very. You're privileged because uh, you will see people in that put short period when the church members come, and that's all till after one week, that's all. Then the funeral, you, they, they, will, they will behave as if they, mm -hmm. they love the, um, the widow, the widow, and after the funeral, that's all. Because pre and post funeral is one of the most important mm -hmm. things that we need to do. Mom, I, when I was reading the, the book, I, I saw the agrade and um, the, the rite mm -hmm. they performed during. Mm -hmm. Now we, we, talk, we are um, touching on the funeral thing. I don't know whether you, you were asked to go stand beside him for him to be bathed or... I don't know. How, how did yours happen? No. You see, now, like I said again, in the olden days, things were done differently. For example, there were no, no mocks and things. And so when somebody died, the person is bathed at home mm -hmm. in the olden days. Mm -hmm. Now there are funeral homes. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to bath your own mm -hmm. uh, body. So the funeral home does everything. So there's nothing like you seeing the body or anything. Whereas in the olden days, they would say the oldest child should throw the water on the person before they bath the person. Mm -hmm. But now in the funeral home, where are you to go and throw the water? <laughs> so everything is done there. And you see the person dressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I believe a few mm. people still go by the tradition exactly, of yeah, bathing yeah, the body yeah. in a minority, mm. a serious minority. Most people would use the funeral homes. Yeah, because um, we just had a funeral where you see the, they, they will stand at the, 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 the coffin and um, then they will put it in. So most of the ways we do our papa and I, 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 I don't know, have you, have you done a, a, a search on that and and what does that also mean? I, I say it in my book that that is done. Because traditionally, the belief is that the dead man or woman or child is going on a journey mm -hmm. and will actually cross the River Jordan. Please don't ask me where. <laughs> but they <laughs> say the person will cross <laughs> the <laughs> River <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> and therefore, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> they even give the person money well, yeah, I've seen to so cross many. the River Jordan. Yeah, yeah, I mean, in reading the Bible, I haven't found it anywhere that they cross Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> they give the river money, they give handkerchiefs, mm -hmm. they give rings, they give things. And if you've, you have noticed, not all of these things are put in the coffin. Mm -hmm. Only one or two are put. The rest are shared mm -hmm. among the older people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am of the view that if that is what pleases the family, they should do it. Mm -hmm. But personally, I don't want anything put in my coffin when I die, and my children know. Okay. Personally, I don't want any ring or any handkerchief or anything put in my funeral, mm -hmm. because if somebody needs the handkerchief, give it to them. Exactly. I don't need it exactly. where I'm going. Exactly. I don't need money. So personally, mm -hmm. those things are needed by the living mm -hmm. and not the dead. Mm -hmm. So that's my personal take mm -hmm. on it. Okay. In my husband's case, we did not put any rings or things in the mm -hmm. uh, coffin, mm -hmm. because, primarily because I don't like I don't it. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, um, the fancies will say, the accounts will say, on any busy, what can then? On any busy, so somebody will come, mm -hmm. and the person standing there will say, "O si me si na wa be, o si don you busy in papi, o yin wa be." I have nothing against that. Mm -hmm. If that is what will make somebody um, <laughs> less um, <laughs> hurting, give, yeah, or if that is what uh, will make somebody relax, right, okay. I think that. There is nothing wrong with somebody coming to say, I'm Osi mm -hmm. I've been your friend. Mm -hmm. I've come to tell you that, have a safe journey. I think there's nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. What I don't like is all the paraphernalia that they will bring <laughs> and it's a waste because exactly. honestly, why would you spend even five CDs or 10 CDs going to buy something mm -hmm. to come and put the dead when maybe somebody needs that five CDs to buy cuckoo or something? Mm -hmm. So this is where I come from. Mm, okay, yeah, wonderful. but in my case, nothing like that was done. That is wonderful. Yeah. So Ma, how was the grieving process? Um, how was the grieving process? Mm -hmm. Personally. I have a problem with what people term as the grieving process. Okay. 
My problem with that is that grieving, if I may explain, yeah, grieving to. is a number of emotions mm -hmm. that come into play when something happens to you. Mm -hmm. It could be a shock from losing a job. Mm -hmm. It exactly. could be a divorce. Mm -hmm. It could be a sickness. In this mm -hmm. case, we are talking about death. lose death. Okay. So a death brings all kinds of emotions. Some of it is anger, mm -hmm. sadness, mm -hmm. helplessness, mm -hmm. even guilt, even fear. So these, the emotions are what brings on the grief. Mm -hmm. The grief and the grieving process, as people call it, is the period where you are flooded with these emotions. Mm -hmm. That's the grieving process, mm -hmm. I, I suppose so. Mm -hmm. The point is that grieving is very private. Mm -hmm. And grieving is not something that can be shared by people. Mm -hmm. And one person's grieving may be different from another yeah, person. person. And even though there are books that give you the things, the grieving faces, some mm -hmm. books will give you grieving faces and say mm -hmm. there are five or six grieving five, faces. Yeah, five, All those are helpful, they are good. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that somebody can experience 20 grieving faces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody will experience three, yeah, exactly. somebody will experience four. That's mm -hmm. why. I worry about the term grieving process, okay. but definitely we grieve at the loss of somebody. Someone, Someone dies, you grieve. Exactly. It is a personal thing. Pe I say personal because even me, I had lost my brother, I had lost my sister, I had lost my father before my husband died. Mm. So? And I thought that with those three losses, mm -hmm. I was champion to, 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 to be able to <laughs> okay. go uh, through, through death um, and yes. the pain and everything. But I realized that no two deaths are the same. Mm. And therefore, all the experiences I thought I'd gathered on the three deaths to put me in a good stead for my husband and the giving and everything was not true. Mm. Was not true. Mm. A death of a husband is different from a death of a father, a, a death of a mother. Child or something, yeah. For example, my grieving for my husband is different from my son's grieving for the father. Mm -hmm my daughter is grieving for their father, mm -hmm. my grandchildren grieving for their father. All of us grieve differently, mm -hmm. even though it's for the same person. Mm -hmm. The same way my husband's siblings grieving for him mm -hmm. is different. My husband's mother's grieving for him is different, even though we are all grieving for the same person. Mm -hmm. So even though I sit here today, I cannot prescribe to any widow or widower how to grieve. Mm -hmm. I cannot, because okay. grieving is not what do you call it? Um, let me say, there's no timetable for grieving. There's no <laughs> a method of grieving. Okay. Grieving, it depends on the is, person. On the person. Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. when we say the process, I worry because, is it a process? Um, I ask myself, is grieving a process? You go through the shock and how yeah. you're going to live that life because it starts, somebody wouldn't, the denial state, somebody mm -hmm. was told, and I know somebody who, the husband have died more than 10 years and still goes to the garden where she 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 does with the husband and still awaiting for the coming of the husband but i've just told you that grieving you cannot say that you have to go through stage one stage two stage three you can there's not like that mm -hmm. even though we are told that there's a denial phase a acceptance phase those 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 mm -hmm. it's not everybody who goes through it chronologically mm -hmm. somebody when it happens will get shocked but then will not live in denial mm -hmm. and will move on. Mm -hmm. So it is not as clear cut as you say, but definitely people go through a lot of phases. Mm -hmm. People go okay. through a lot of yeah, phases. Phase, okay. People go through a lot of phases. It is not the same order for everybody mm -hmm. because of a number of things. First of all, your relationship with that person who has died comes mm -hmm. into play. Mm -hmm. Secondly, how that person died comes into play. Thirdly, your own understanding of death comes into play. Mm -hmm. And then fourthly, I will say, your whole acceptance mm -hmm. of the death also comes to play. All those things help you. In my case, I would say that, before I say that, I also want to point out that you never stop grieving. Mm -hmm. You never stop grieving. Mm -hmm. I said earlier that grieving is the emotions that come to play in you. 
You can ask somebody whose husband died 12 years ago or 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and they'll tell you sometimes they feel sad. Exactly. That is grief. That's grief. So you never stop grieving. You don't stop grieving. Yeah. You don't stop grieving. Mm -hmm. But you stop crying. You stop mourning. Okay. Mourning is when the grief becomes public. Mm -hmm. When your grief overwhelms you so much that it brings tears to you, mm -hmm. then you cry. Mm -hmm. So as the intensity of your grieving becomes less, mm -hmm. the crying becomes less mm -hmm. to a point where you start crying. Mm -hmm. So you find that in the first weeks of the death, you are crying all the time. You can't do anything. Mm -hmm. As the time goes by, the crying stops. So you stop crying, mm -hmm. but you do not stop grieving. Okay. You do not stop grieving because the memory of the person continues to live in your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. Because somebody who was a part of you is gone. And therefore, nothing takes away that memory. And as much as you continue to remember that person, you are filled with either happiness, sadness, or pain, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you don't stop grieving. What happens is that with time, the intensity of the grief lessens. Mm -hmm. And then some memory that used to bring you sadness, mm -hmm. that used to bring you tears, mm -hmm. now will not bring you the tear. Okay. So that is the difference, That's if I've made myself clear. Yeah, you are, you are so clear. Mm -hmm. Ma, you, you are so clear. Um, let me read some comment that is in um, from Elder, Elder, Elder Dr. J.B. Fojo of Penquas. Elder, I... I look for a day to meet you because you have been a regular tester to my program and mm -hmm. I, I hope and pray that one day we'll meet. And he's saying that, um, very emotional, but I thank God for a courageous and a Christian wife who was able to stand firm in those hard times. May God continue to keep and bless her in the days ahead. Ella, thank you for your comment. Um, he says, uh, from um, Elder uh, Philbert, he said, may the Lord be your comfort and strength. Elder, God bless you. Uh, that Philbert, uh, Philbert, God bless you for your, for your comment. All right, uh, ma'am, with this comment, there's a question I want to ask on top. Um, now, um, from, from the day he died in the funeral to now, the daily lifestyle, because I want, I want probably somebody to also understand it. Somebody had lost their wife or her husband and think that all is gone. Mm. Ma'am, how, how, what, what do you do that keeps you going? Um, let me start by pointing out that when a death occurs, it's so devastating mm -hmm. that it's like you being knocked down mm -hmm. and you are flat on the ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you are so flat on the ground that you need to make a determination either to continue lying flat on the ground mm -hmm. and be shattered mm -hmm. or to get up. Mm -hmm. If you decide that you'll be shattered and not get up, mm -hmm. then you've lost it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've lost it. Mm -hmm. And that is where I say the Christian faith comes in. Mm -hmm. One Christian. Christian faith comes in. The first thing that you need to do, and which I did, mm -hmm. was to acknowledge, mm -hmm. acknowledge mm -hmm. the loss. Mm -hmm. Was to try and acknowledge the loss and come to terms with it that, look, he is dead. Exactly. Indeed, exactly. he is dead. Okay, it's accepting, accepting. He is the dead, fact. and I am shattered. I'm wounded. Mm. I'm going through a lot of pain. Mm. You don't just acknowledge the death, but accept and acknowledge your grieving too. Yeah. Okay. That yes, it has shattered me. I'm grieving, mm -hmm. because if you don't accept the pain you are going through, mm. then you live in denial. That's okay. where denial comes. Okay. So you accept the pain you are going through mm -hmm. and know that it is real, he's dead, mm -hmm. and I'm shattered, I'm going through mm -hmm. pain. Mm -hmm. Once you accept the pain, you also have to make a determination, which I made, that I need to give myself time. You see, grieving has no timetable. Mm -hmm. So all those people who are saying, oh, what's the do? Eh, yeah, jai soon. Oh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. give your, oh, in two months, you'll be okay. Mm -hmm. It has no timetable. Mm -hmm. So allow yourself to bring out the emotions. Mm -hmm. Don't deny yourself from crying. Mm -hmm. In fact, I say in my book that cry and cry, cry plenty. <laughs> cry your heart exactly. out. How can somebody lose a wife or a husband or a daughter or a son and you say, mm -hmm. you are cruel. Yeah. Cry your heart out. So give yourself time to go through. A lot of the times we are being bullied we are being pressurized, so we are not crying enough. We are not grieving enough. And then we quickly 
step over it and we want to act as if nothing happened mm -hmm. and that is a problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. again you need to yourself forgive yourself and forgive others because you'll be wondering what did i do right what did i do wrong was i a cause of the death what happened i know some people have felt so guilty that oh maybe this hospital i sent my husband or wife if i hadn't sent them they wouldn't have died mm -hmm. maybe we shouldn't have gone to the gym mm -hmm. maybe that morning if we didn't go to the gym we would have died maybe 37 maybe this mm -hmm. and this so you start blaming yourself and others mm -hmm. guilt has a way of lowering your self-esteem guilt has a way of pushing you down and the devil likes working with those things in our lives and it can also make you fearful mm. so you need to come to terms with that forgive yourself mm. it's nothing you did it's nothing somebody mm. did mm. 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 and then after you've done all that also just remember that you will not live in fear you will not live in pain forever and that it, it will be over and after you've done it tell yourself that whatever happens after you've gone through this you may be reshaped you may come out differently and that is where we have to believe god when jesus said that i'll never leave you or forsake you he meant it mm -hmm. he meant it you know one of the things that i found out was that when my husband died if i didn't know the lord I'd be miserable. Okay. And right now, I say to myself, those who don't know God, those who don't have a relationship, how do they move forward when somebody close dies? Mm. Because honestly, had it not been my faith in God, I may have committed suicide. Mm -hmm. I may have died myself exactly. because of how mm. the mm. things happen. Mm. But it is my knowledge and my relationship with God that helped me. Mm. Because it is like a keeping a savings account or an investment. We go to the bank, we make deposits, we make investments. When we need money, we go and take. When we are broke, we disinvest. Mm. That is what the word of God is. Mm. The word of God that we read all the time is an investment we are making. Mm. In times like this, we go back to the word mm. and we use the word. For example, Jeremiah 29, 11. Mm -hmm. It's a difficult one. <laughs> the Lord says he has good plans for it me. Does exactly, man. And he says that the plans will prosper me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean after my husband has died, <laughs> what plans will prosper me? You understand? Exactly. What plans will prosper exactly. me? Exactly. But then, because I know that he is a God who knows the beginning from the end, he's a sovereign God and he's truthful. Mm -hmm. So even though my plans are shattered with my mm -hmm. husband, Mm -hmm. I so believe that mm -hmm. he has good plans for me. Okay. Because the same God mm. has said in Isaiah 43, 2, mm. that when I pass through the waters, mm -hmm. he's there. <laughs> he says, even the fire, it will, it will, it will, I'll go through, it's gonna, but yes, it will set me ablaze. Never, yes, yes. It will set me ablaze. Yeah, exactly. And this same God, the three Jewish boys, when they were put into the fire, yeah, when they came out, their yeah, hair no, was not bent. Even the smoke you couldn't exactly, feel from exactly, their exactly, cloth. Exactly. So now exactly. this come to mind. You know, before maybe you've read it, but it didn't stick. But when you are in the heat of things, like I said, like a bank account, it comes to mind and you begin to wonder. So this thing that God said, what does it mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is where I began to claim those promises oh, yeah. and appropriate them. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like if you give your child a gift. Mm. You buy the gift and wrap and put it into your room. And so you've given it to the child. It is not your child's. Yeah, exactly. It is it's still yours. Yeah, exactly. And even if you give a child, the child, if the child doesn't unwrap it and mm -hmm. use it, mm -hmm. there'll be no, um, exactly. they won't have any exactly. use. Exactly. That is what the promise of God are like. Hallelujah. In the Bible, when we read them, they are just their promises. Mm. And so we take them and we appropriate them mm. and make it part of our lives mm. and leave them. Mm. It doesn't work. Mm. So I decided that on my own, there was nothing I could do yeah. because I cried my heart out. Mm -hmm. I asked God many questions. Mm -hmm. The whys and hows plenty. Mm -hmm. In fact, if God were here, God would tell you that every minute I was asking him questions. Mm -hmm. I could go to my room and ask, I talked to God like we were sitting down. Mm -hmm. I could say, now you two, why? Mm -hmm. Why did you take my husband away? What do you want me to do now? I could ask God those things and so on. But I realized that I wouldn't get any answers. Mm. And I also realized that on my own, I couldn't deal with it. So I just threw myself into the hands of God 
And I begged him. I begged him to help me. One of the things that grief does, and that the death of somebody does, is to humble us. Mm. If somebody close to you dies and you are not humbled, mm -hmm. it should humble you. It should humble you enough to look at life and to look at yourself and refocus and reassess and realign. Look at your whole life. Because that person with everything died. My husband died without saying bye bye. One minute is alive, one minute is died. 40 years and five months of marriage were all gone. <laughs> Our plans, everything were gone. If death doesn't humble you, I don't know what will humble you. And it begins to make you grateful. Exactly. Make you grateful because he is gone, but I'm alive. Yeah. I wake up every morning. That is when you know that even the fact that you wake up and you are breathing is not your part, it's God, so thank him. You know, we take it for granted, yeah. you wake up, it should make you grateful, very, very grateful. And so I just put everything I had on God mm. and I asked God to help me. And God was gracious enough, like he has said, that he will never leave or forsake us. He actually gave me the grace. And it is just by his grace that every day I was able to move a step. I was able to move a step till now. All right. Um, uh, um, my, my time, my time, the one hour is too limited, but whatever is going to do. Mom, um, I, I, want, I want you to advise widows, but I want to go for this, um, this quick, 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 quick break. When we return, Mom, you're going to advise, give a word or two for the widows and we'll call it um, a day. So uh, viewers, um, please don't go anywhere. I'll be right back shortly. <laughs> Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. Eradibra. Me me yegi na yongu 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 do. Asafunitia e watakwa. A West Central Ghana Conference. A yen shi shenye ke siye di amaye e wan pae bo kwa enso. Psalm 50 verse 15 say, Call upon me in the days of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and this shall glorify be my Lord. It is important for us to know that without prayers we can do nothing. For this purpose, ye ye bosumia aye April a fi fourteenth and the seventeenth and ye see who say ye de ye and pibo kessier a wo West Central Ghana Conference as a fubiamo. Wo sofo a be co district for fro. Now I'm sorry penin so be co a sorry for frobo. Tu an among na ma o nyan ku ponche share a wa ye dia ma yen se ye ne nebe tu an amon wo mfie nu mi mu na bo ye me tu ma ben ye no e tu mi akoso me ma sa ajumade yi empa otri so o kwan hwe ni bia ro ji ne hu di se o ye kristo ni mapa no ye is di ni mapa no ese se o de ni pa ba ku kan ho besra no e wo sa ajumade ya ye bi di no sa nansan mu no afi ajumade na wiye mu no be me da nwimre no ye nyina be hia asori bia mu be communion service na bo ye me etumi de ehu asi ho ma urade na ajumade o de a hye ye sa no ye tumi akọ ajumade na ti fa semina an se kenya ye na ye nko it be Kenya who now so many are coping with so many things. Then for now, some people are suffering in Ghana. What me a demobi? God bless you, Maranatha. Uh, welcome back from the from the quick break. Um, I have few message for madame before she she sum up um, tell us where she'll get a book and exactly a word to the widows and widowers and also mm. if she has the chance which of the the right can she or will she abolish if she has <laughs> a right all right so um from from our, our viewers um one says that please ask madame um how does she think the church can handle widows um, Ma'am, and so you t talk briefly about that. And also, um, Mrs. Mishatha has been a great inspiration. She's a real Christian. I always learn some deep insight listening to any aspect of his, this story of hers over and over again. God bless you, Auntie Tilly. 
So Auntie Tilly, the ma ma Mama Bisata <laughs> might know Auntie Tilly. So how can the church help um, um, quickly a uh, word to the widows and in your in your capacity if you have been given a chance to abolish any of the rights, which one will you do so? A uh, word, so let's begin from now. How can the church help? A uh, word, how can the church help? I think the church should act as a support. Okay. And apart from going to pray mm -hmm. and going to sing, mm -hmm. The church should have people who would look at the emotional side mm. of the bereaved. Right. And if there are trained counselors in the church, then they should be doing it. Okay. The church can also bring widows and widowers together mm -hmm. because having a, mm. hear, a hearing, mm. uh, telling your story to one another, listening to how somebody went through, may not answer all your questions, but definitely will give you a clue. All right. So now um in your capacity a, a, a chance given to you for you to abolish any of the rights which one will you do so and why any of the rights that is injurious to the woman or the man mm -hmm. i think should be abolished the drinking of the, the drinking of the concussions <laughs> the bathing of the people at uh, dawn mm -hmm. and the shaving of the hair okay. and anything injurious to the woman okay. should be abolished so or the man um the, your word to the widows and widowers who are watching now for you who are watching, I just want to let you know that, yes, death will come. Death stings. Death is painful. Grieving will come. But I would like you to know that you don't have to be down and out. And that before there was death, there was love. And love is God. And God gives us all the enablement the grace, the power to turn our pain into something beautiful as he has done with me. Thank you. All right, so, um, Mom, um, joy comes in the morning, begin with the, with the beautiful um, the chapter. I like the way you begin your, the content. Um, Which one, strength the, the, the storm? No, mm. joy comes in the morning. It starts mm. from, will we ever stop crying? It's, it's, it's amazing, which means that it confirms the fact that grieving is not Grieving is not, it doesn't have an end. Because as it stands now, you still misses him. And sometimes I know you, you wipe your tears because there are things mm -hmm. you guys used to do together. Mm -hmm. And for the past three years, that thing is not there. Mom, where, where do we get some of the books to buy? And, um, and about the book, tell us. Uh. Challenge Bookshop, mm -hmm. Christ the King Bookshop, mm -hmm. Airport Shell. Mm -hmm. You can get some to buy oh, there. That's wonderful. And mom, a, a, a word about the, the, the NGO. Um, breaking the myth works with vulnerable children and women. And simply what we are saying is that no matter your circumstance in life, no matter how disadvantaged you are, you can break the cycle of poverty. So no matter who you are, no matter how you are, we can still break the cycle of poverty. So those who are less privileged shouldn't go standing on the street. These are the people the NGO seek to help. So if you can, if you're watching and you, you know, please after that you can just leave your contact and I will just give it to mom and you see the way for the mom. Wounds of the heart says they are grateful for you to come, and and sit here to share this experience because um, it is not something that comes just like that. So um, wounds of the heart says that we should give you this. Um, a beautiful book um, that's the desire of ages for you to go read them and and whenever you you read you remember that one day a time came you came to share with us experiences that will help somebody who was watching so that is um, um our gratitude we say that's our gratitude for you to to also understand the fact that we appreciate um you coming to our studio so um um, is that a book where again, um, Airport Shell? Airport Shell, Christ the King Bookshop, Bookshop, Challenge Bookshop. Challenge Bookshop. When you go there, you get all the copies that joy comes in the morning and um, strength in the storm. This one is, is something else. And this one also climbs is this. I know some uh, part three of this will come and whatever happens, mom will continue to write. Mom, God bless you and thank you so much for your time. I know how busy you are, but making time for us to for you to come sit here to share with us it's a privilege i i pray to god for strength and as you still in this god should use you to help other people who 
are into it so that they can also grip better just as you are. And viewers, um, thank you so much for your time with us on, on studio. Um, you watching some um, wherever you're watching. God bless you. Slick Freak, God bless you for your fabric. Um, I told you if you, you want Slick Freak, Instagram Slick Freak, Facebook Slick Freak. And also, Alpha Arts, God bless you, that young man who designs my flower for me. If you need any of that search, you can contact him. Inst um, Facebook, he's there. Instagram, too, he's, he's there. And you'll be on the right. I thank all of you for, for making this, this program a success, um, especially Mom um, um, Matilda and Mr. Arthur, um, an inspiration, an author, and he still goes places to give speech about life, about about grieving, about trauma, about anything. So please, if you need him, just just see me somewhere. I'll, I'll connect you tomorrow. Mom, God bless you. I'm sure we'll be there. I'm by a shoulder for for us to be a blessing. And we know that one day, whenever I call you again, Mom, please you come. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm really honored to be on this show, so and I'm very prepared to help anybody who needs help in this area. So. Even if you are going to schools or wherever and you think I can be in for help, you can let me know. All right. So, Thank you so, so much. Uh, so, come full strain. Come full strain. Mom is giving, is endorsing it here, right? So, Mom, thank you so much. When the time comes, we'll, 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 we'll let you know. Thank All you. Our viewers have been your regular hosts. Um, the name goes by Pastor Daniel Vidubideva. I'm out. <laughs>